Welcome to video four. Today's video is all about a review of lines, which we now know are called linear functions. All right, the three things we're going to review today are slope, writing equation in y-intercept form, and graphing lines. All right, so let's jump right into it with the slope formula. So as a reminder from middle school, <clears throat> We did learn the slope formula, so the symbol for slope, or the letter for slope is m, is equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Some of you may have learned this as change in y all over change in x. Okay, so you can write down either one of those formulas. Now let's talk a, lot of, a little bit about slope. So a lot of us remember slope as it is the rise over run of our lines. But slope can also be called the direction of a line. So the direction, is it going diagonally up, diagonally down? All right, we can also talk about slope, and this is what we're gonna be using a lot this year, as the rate of change. How much is your change is the is the graph changing for every point? So the rate of change. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's practice finding slope. So find the slope of a line that passes through the given points. So remember, whenever you have a point, it's x comma y, x comma y. So if I want to do change in y, all over change in x. Here's what we're going to do. So it's y2 minus y1, so my second y is going to be 13, minus my first y is negative 3, all over x2 minus x1. So we're going to go ahead and do 8 minus 6. Okay, so that means when we do that, we have 13 minus negative 3. So that's keep change change, so really that's going to become 16 all over 8 minus 6 is 2. Now with slope, we always want to reduce. So 16 over 2, we're going to get 8 over 1. So our rate of change is up 8 over 1. Okay, let's go ahead now, and I'd like you to try to find the slope of part B. All right, let's take a look here. So change in y over change in x. So I plugged in my points. This time, instead of doing the second point minus the first point, I did the first point minus the second point. It doesn't matter which order you go, as long as you're consistent in the numerator and the denominator. So I was able to get 3 over negative 12, which then reduces to a negative 1 over 4. So as long as there's one negative, the whole thing is negative. All right, let's take a look then at the equation of a line. So the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. So the m represents the slope, and the b represents the y-intercept. Okay, we also have what's called the x-intercept, but we can't see that by just looking at the line. So to find the x-intercept, which is where it crosses the x-axis, you're going to set y equal to 0 and solve for x. All right, so let's try our first problem set. So here, we're going to find the slope, the y-intercept, and the x-intercept. So let's take a look at our first example here. Okay, now we see it's very similar to our equation of a line, but there's a 2 in the front. So I want to get the y all by itself. So I'm going to divide everything by 2. Okay, and when we do that, we end up with y is equal to 2x minus 3. Okay, so that means now my slope is the number in front of the x, which is 2. Or in other words, it would be 2 over 1. My y-intercept, where it crosses over the x-axis, would be negative 3. And then, if I want to find the x-intercept, to find the x-intercept, I'm going to set the whole equation equal to 0 and solve for x. So I'm going to go 0 equals 2x minus 3. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So 3 is equal to 2x, and I divide both sides by 2. 
So x is equal to 1.5. So my x-intercept here would be 1.5. Okay, now I want to show you kind of a neat trick that you can check your work in the calculator. So let's go ahead and we're going to take a look here. I'm going to turn my calculator on. Okay, so whenever we're graphing, remember we're setting it equal to y. y equals. So if we take a look here, right above your screen, there's a y equals button. I'm going to hit y equals. Now, if you have something that's already there, all you have to do is clear it out. Okay, so now I'm going to type in my equation of a line. So 2. Now, the x button that we're going to use is not the green letter x. It's this variable button. It has, oops, it has x, t, theta, and n. That's called the variable button. So we hit the variable button and then minus 3. Now, if we hit graph, oops, so I want a, a regular window here, so I'm going to fix mine up a little bit. So I'm going to hit zoom 6 so I get a regular graph. There is my line. So my line is going up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. The y-intercept is negative 3, so this is my y-axis. It's negative 3. And my x-intercept, it crosses the x-axis. It looks like right there at positive 1.5. Okay, let's try another one. So let's go ahead now and try number two. So we want to set this equal to y, so I'm going to add my x to the other side. So my equation is y equals x plus 12. So now I want to find my slope. All right, so my slope is the number in front of the x. Now there's no number there, so if there's no number there, it's really 1. Now, slope is supposed to be a fraction rise over run, so I'm going to put 1 over 1. Okay, now we have our y-intercept. So your y-intercept is the number that you're adding or subtracting on, and here it's going to be 12. And to find the x-intercept, we're going to set the whole thing equal to 0. So 0 equals x plus 12. So then I'm going to subtract 12 to the other side and we're going to get x is equal to negative 12. So it's going to cross the x-axis at negative 12. Okay, so let's go ahead then and try the last one. So I want to go ahead, set this equal to y, so I'm going to divide everything by 3. So y is equal to 2 thirds x minus 5 divided by 3 is 5, or 15 divided by 3 is 5. So now I want to find my slope. So my slope is the number in front of the x, which is 2 thirds. My y-intercept is the number by itself over here. So the constant is negative 5. Now we have to find our x-intercept, which we're going to have to do a little bit of work for. So we're going to take the equation, set it equal to 0. So 2 thirds x minus 5. So I'm going to add 5, so I get 2 thirds x is equal to 5, and then I multiply by the reciprocal. All right, so to multiply by the reciprocal, oh, to get off of this screen, whenever you need to get onto the main screen, you hit second, and the mode button, that's the word quit. Okay, so 5 parentheses 3 divided by 2. So 7.5. So x is equal to 7.5, and we've got it. Okay, so now let's take a look at problem set number two. So now, using the given slope and y-intercept, write an equation. So here we have the slope and the y-intercept. So we remember the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. So all I'm going to do is substitute in the slope and the y-intercept. So this would become y is equal to negative 3x minus 6. And now for the second equation, we're going to do the same thing. So y equals mx plus b. So y is equal to, I'm going to replace the m with the 1 half and replace the b with a negative 5. Okay, so now we've reviewed slope. We've reviewed writing equations in y-intercept form. So the last part for today is going to be graphing. And to graph today, you will be needing a ruler, so make sure you've got a ruler handy. Okay, so here we go. Graph each equation using the slope 
and y-intercept from the equation. All right, so here we go. f of x is equal to 2x plus 6. Well, remember from our lesson the other day, f of x is function notation. Remember, it's just a fancy way of saying y equals 2x plus 6. So that means my slope for this line is 2 over 1, and my y-intercept is going to be negative 6. So now if I want to go and graph it, we're going to go down now. Let's see, zoom out. Okay, so here's my x-axis. Here's my y-axis. So I'm going to count by ones. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so now that we have it written, we can go ahead and plot it. So my y-intercept is negative 6. So on the y, we're going to go down to negative 6. Negative 5, negative 6. This is my first point. Now my slope is positive 2 over 1. So I'm going to go up 2 to the right 1. 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 And I could continue doing this along my graph. And once I have a bunch of points, I'm going to go ahead and connect them with using a ruler. Okay, and I want to go all the way across my graph. Now, at one of the arrows, we're now going to write the equation. All right, there's one. We've got one more to go. So everybody, let's take a look now at our second equation. Now, before I can graph this, I have to get it in y-intercept notation. So I have to get the y by itself. So the first thing we're going to do is subtract 2x. So 3y is equal to, we always put the x first. Then I'm going to divide everything by 3. So y is equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 2. Okay, so that means my slope is negative 2 thirds, and my y-intercept is 2. So now we can go ahead and graph this. So a y-intercept of 2 means on the y-axis, we start at positive 2. Now my slope is negative 2 over 3. So because it's negative, we go down 2, and you always go to the right. 1, 2, 3. It's this point right here. Negative 2, down 2, and we always go to the right. Down 2, always go to the right. And now we have a few points. So we can use our rulers to connect our points. Okay, and then put arrows. At one of the arrows, then we're going to write our equation. So y equals, I plotted the line, negative 2 thirds x plus 2. And ladies and gentlemen, that is it for today. We have reviewed slope, writing the equations, and graphing our lines. Nice job today.